Now let's start writing the very first test. So the very first thing I'll be doing is I'll be creating a new package called as test cases. And inside this package, I'm going to create a new class. We can give any name to the, this class for the timing, uh, since we are understanding the test ng basics only. So I'm going to create a class with the name as test case one. Now in this uh, class, let's say uh, we have a method where we want to perform login, right? I'll simply gonna say do login. So in this do login method, uh, there's a code written which will actually gonna perform login, right? Be it a Selenium code, be it a API code, or be it Appium code, right? Let's say we have written a code uh, through which we are performing login over here, right? So for the time being, since we are not using any any third party API, uh, third party framework, so I'll just gonna print uh, over here. Let's say executing login test. Now, in case we are just using Core Java, we know that how to call this method. We need to create an object of this class, and using the object reference, we call the method, right? But we need to have a main method for that. Now, in case of test ng there is no main method. We'll not be using main method at all in any of our project, right? From now onwards, there won't be any main method. So if main method is not there, then how this method will be executed? So this method will be executed with the help of something called as annotations. So there are some predefined annotations provided by testng. Uh, something like on top of this method, we need to write at the rate test. So if you mouse over onto this, you'll get an option to import, import test ng, org test ng annotation. Make sure that you don't add it through JUnit, right? Because we are using test ng, so the import should be through test ng only. So once you add it, now what this add the rate test annotation will gonna do, this will treat this single method as one single test case and will make it executable. So if you right click now, if you say run as test ng test, see you got, got an option of test ng test. Initially when we run it, we get an option as Java application, but now we are getting as test ng test. So if I click on this, you're gonna see that it shows total test run one, failure zero, skip zero. And over here it shows test pass, executing login test pass, right? If you see over here, you're gonna see everything in green and green represents that the test is passed. So now this code is converted into a test case. Same way you can have n number of test annotations, you can have n number of methods with at the rate test annotations. You can create one more method that says uh, at the rate test do user registration. So let's say this is a second test, user registration test. Now if I right click over here, say run as test ng test, you're gonna see that both login and user registration are executed, right? But login executed first and then user registration executed. So maybe I want to execute user registration first because till the time we won't register a user, we can't log in with that user, right? So maybe I'll cut it from here and paste it over here and then run it. Still, you're gonna see login will gonna execute first, right? The sequence will not gonna matter, right? No matter if you have written it down or if you have written it in the very beginning, it won't be executed in this way, right? It test ng execute these methods alphabetically, right? So alphabetically, login comes first, then user registration. If in case you want that user registration should execute first, then you can define a priority to this test. So you can say priority equal to one, one being the highest priority. Same way to the second test, you can say priority equal to two. Save this, run as test ng test, and you're gonna see that user registration executed first and then login executed, right? This is how you'll be defining priority to your test cases. Now at times I want that, uh, uh, I want to do some action before every test case. Let's say if you're working on Selenium, then I want to launch a browser before this test as well as before this test. So I'm gonna write 
uh, a method. I'm going to create a method. Let's say launch browser. And inside this, I'm going to write some code for launching browser. So what I'll do on top of it, I'll write something called as add the rate before method. Now this is another annotation imported through org test annotations. So what happened when I run this? It will going to execute before every test case, you're going to see launching browser executing user registration test launching browser executing login test. Right. So before method will going to run before every test case. Same way if I want after launching browser, after uh, I mean, once the browser is launched, test case is executed. After that, I want to close that browser. So after every test execution, I want to close the browser as well. So I'm going to create another method for the same public void close browser. Inside it, I'm going to write some code for closing the browser. And on top of it, I'll write add the rate after method. This is another predefined annotation. So import it, save, right click, test ng test. And you're going to see launching, executing test, closing, launching, executing test, closing, both test pass. In your report, in your result, you're only going to see your test cases. Two tests run, both are pass, right? Same way, uh, what I want to do in this class, before any test executes, I want to create a database connection. So like there, there should be a code for creating DB connection. Creating DB connection. And there should be a code for closing DB connection as well. Close DB connection. Let me just create DB connection. Right, so inside it, I'm going to write a code for closing DB connection. On top of it, I'll write at the rate before test. On top of it, I'll write at the rate after test. So before test is the very first thing that will be called inside this class. And after test will be called after executing all your test cases. So if I run this, and this will be called only once not like before method before each test, it will be called only once. So database connection will be established at the very beginning. And at the end, database connection will be closed. Right. So this is how test ng actually works. Test ng works with the help of the these annotations, these annotations define the flow of your code that you have written, which thing to call first and which thing to call after that. Right, so this is a very basic concept of test ng, which you cannot implement it using the core Java main method. That is the reason this framework is required. This Java framework is required because the actual projects that are being built up are using test ng only. Right, you need to use at least a one Java framework uh, or uh, a test runner in order to convert your existing code into test cases or test suits. And test ng is what which is very widely used in the industry, right? So in the next lecture, we're going to see a couple of more annotations. There are n number of annotations available uh, in test ng, how we can pass a test case, how we can add a validation, we can fail a test case, right? So that thing we're going to look in the next lecture. Thank you.